Welcome back. Black Arts in the Podcast coming back at you. Again. Once again. Mm. It's me, Fletcher, with me as always. And me. Mr. Whitehead. So uh, it's just us two tonight. Uh, back back to the basics. Back to the basics, yeah, but that's okay. And uh, I guess it's fitting. It's just the two of us. Uh, for the movie we're covering, uh, since uh, we're little Lynch boys. We are. David Lynch boys. Let me, <laughs> let me correct that one. We're David Lynch fans. And uh, this was a movie... That I had attempted to watch up to a certain scene and was so utterly shocked by what I saw a very reputable actor say that I had to pause the movie and call Fletcher and ask him, what the fuck is this? And I just never, and I, then I had people come over afterwards, so they didn't really want to start watching this movie like partway through, so I just never went back and watched it, but I finally did. And Fletcher, what movie did, did I finish? Uh, Blue Velvet. Yes. Uh, was it 88? Uh, 86, I believe. Yeah. Uh, 1986, uh, before Twin Peaks, uh, David Lynch made a... What would you call this? Like a crime noir? Thrill- <laughs> like, it's the most... It's one of the tamer Lynches, I'll yeah. be honest. But I can still see touches of the Black Lodge... Uh, Oh yeah, you can definitely feel in the this. lynch in there. I uh, it's fun because you you finally just had watched it after after that story you were telling at the beginning of a number which, of years. Which is, yeah, it's been yeah several years. And I, I remember you showing everyone that scene. You're telling me you showed everyone that scene or whatever. Yeah, I was like, hey, watch this scene, guys. Do you want? I, I'm pretty sure Ian was one of those guys, and they were just like, ah, goddamn, that's hilarious. And I was like, do you want to finish watching this movie? And they're like, no, like. And you were like, okay, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. I, you know, I don't, I don't like, you know, just walking into a movie halfway and then finishing it. Because which... I had seen it. Yeah, yeah, I had. Because uh, you had seen it and told me about it. Yeah, yeah, I think and I that had was seen around it. the time when I had first started watching a lot of Twin Peaks. It was yeah, falling down that rabbit hole, which is a great rabbit hole to fall down. Oh, it is. It's glorious. Um, but yeah, finally sat down and finished Blue Velvet and. Pretty damn good. I uh, I rewatched it just for this recording, but uh, I showed uh, my roommate it, and he was just like uh, the most utter look of disgust. Uh, I, do you want to say the line what Dennis Hopper says for the scene you're talking about? Do you want to set the scene? I kind of. I <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess yeah. Let's set it. It's Kyle McLaughlin, or is that Kyle McLaughlin? Yeah, Je- he plays Jeffrey in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm making sure I got the actor's name right. Yeah, it is him. Uh, he's hiding in a closet in a woman's room, and uh, th- the woman is a lounge singer, and uh, she catches young uh, young Agent Cooper hiding in her closet. Uh, at knife point, like makes him get naked, makes him get naked, and she fillets him or starts to, and then uh, she's like, "Oh shit!" She hears her door opening. She pushes him back in the closet, and then Dennis Hopper shows up in the role of Frank, and is just the biggest slime ball, just like slapping her around, uh, hitting nitrous oxide. I guess that's what that was. Yeah, yeah. Then he busts the nitrous oxide out and starts getting high, and he's like. All right, put, you know, she's just in like a nightgown. He's like, all right, sit down there, spread your legs. Don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me, slaps her. Hits that nitrous oxide real fucking hard and deep and starts mumbling about his mommy. Then he gets on his hands and knees and he's just looking at this woman with her legs spread open, which you don't get, you don't see it, which is fine. Uh, and he looks down and he's like, between hits of nit- nitrous oxide and, I guess, smelling <laughs> this woman's uh, vagina, he looks up at her and he's like, hmm, uh, baby wants to fuck! <laughs> and that's what shook me to my core, seeing Dennis Hopper l- release that line out of his mouth. And I was like, oh my fucking God, what is this? D- yeah, like... If no one's seen this, I would highly recommend not doing acid and watching it. Because it starts off normal enough. I mean, this one's not, for for a Lynch one, like you were saying earlier, it's very tame. So it's not very trippy, but 
it Holy. goes leaps and bounds from where the story starts. Yeah, because Dennis Hopper is so fucking intense in this movie. So high energy, kind of nice sometimes, but not yeah, really. Like, kind of friendly and like do do I don't want to spoil this one really in a, a weird way or do we want to as far as the story? Excuse me. Um, because I do want people to go watch this. Yeah, one. But, yeah, because this is this is a really good movie. Um, ah, man, I don't know because there are certain scenes I would like to talk about. Oh yeah, I just mean like I don't. Do we want to like spoil the story as a whole or just talk about a couple scenes here and there? I mean. Because I got specific things I can talk about. I just didn't know if we wanted to go beat by by, beat by beat some. Okay, let's not. But let's, I guess, set the movie up. Uh, uh, McLaughlin's character's father, Jeffrey's father, has a uh, a very near fatal stroke just while he's out there watering his plants and stuff. So Jeffrey comes home from college and is kind of like you know. Watching over his dad, you know. Taking care of the hardware store. Yeah, taking care of his family business and stuff, you know. Supporting his family through this through a hard time. Pretty wholesome beginning for a lynch. Yeah. And he uh, he's walking, he's going to visit his father in the hospital. And uh, I guess it's like a smaller town that he's, you know, he knows all the little back cut, cut throughs Old and Lumberton. shit. Lumberton. Yeah, Lumberton. So he's walking from the hospital to back to his house through like some woods and a field and he's picking up rocks and trying to like break a bottle that's by this like abandoned shed. And he happens to look down and he sees a hum- a rotting human ear. And he just picks it up, puts it in a bag, puts it in his pocket, and walks into a police station. And he's like, "Hey!" And he's like, "Hey, is Officer So and So here? You know, I know his daughter I live uh, down the street. Li- yeah, I live down the street from her. Um, you know, I need to talk to him." And he shows him this bag. He's like, "Hey, I've got a. I found a human ear." Everyone's calm as shit about it too. Hey, yeah, it's super calm, and he's just like look, and the, you know, gets the bagging, looks in, and he's like, oh yeah, that's a, uh, it's a human ear. And then the you know the movie takes off from there. Yeah, the, it's the, it's the cops are you know investigating and shit, but Jeffrey is he wants to investigate. He it. wants to investigate too, so he starts his own little side investigation, and he's like, I guess he's also telling the sheriff's daughter, uh, Laura Dern. Yeah, it's probably the first thing I ever saw her, or the youngest I've ever seen her in anything. Yeah, I can't think of what her... I want to say Sandy, but I I know her name's not Sandy in this movie. At least I don't think it is. Either way, um, he's like telling, filling her in on the details of his investigation, and yeah, that's pretty much the whole rest of the movie just, you know, goes off from there. Like, it's funny, because as I was watching it, like I said, uh, my buddy, he was watching it with me, two buyers. He, uh, like... I, it's, it starts off innocently enough that it's like a, just a summertime flick almost. Because he's back in town trying to do like an investigation. Like he's almost like a little... It, it's a weird like 80s college movie in a sense. Like if Lynch... I feel like this was his idea for like Porky's or some shit. Just all the shenanigans. Kyle McLaughlin gets up into this. Jeffrey. Yeah. Like, because... Remember she starts falling for him, the daughter. I was like, this kid's a Mac. Oh yeah, he's he, got the lounge singer. He's got, and he wasn't even interested in the daughter, the detective's daughter, which I thought was kind of great. She got upset well, later on. Yeah, but yeah, he ends up like hooking up with her. Then he's also hooking up with the lounge singer, and uh, th- that little subplot culminates into a very uncomfortable scene um, with everyone involved. Oh yeah, the singing scene where he takes when Dennis Hopper takes him. Oh no! I was talking about the scene where she just shows up naked. Oh god! At his yeah, house, like, and is just like beaten up, and and again that uh, the detective's wife kind of pretty chill about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like I'm so glad this movie happened because I think if this would well no Dune happened. I guess I'm glad Dune happened because if it, Kyle McLaughlin wouldn't have done Dune, he never would have done this, and they probably never would have done. He never been Cooper in Twin Peaks. Yeah, which there are weird elements of this movie that uh, pop up in Twin Peaks, like uh, Lumber. T- uh, the the town's called Lumberton, but like Twin Peaks uh, is a lumber town. Yeah, with you know lumber mills and shit. Uh, and then there's basically both stories are just like un- uncovering the uh, the seedy underbelly of a very wholesome. 
town. Town. It's a common th- thing. Uh, it's a common theme with Lynch. I think to do that sometimes. Or, yeah. Or with most of his work. Yeah. See the seedy underbelly of of anything. Yeah. But yeah, you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're not gonna spoil it, so I'm not gonna say. But uh, Dennis Hopper plays a uh, very, very horrible bastard. Which he's great at. He's great. Yeah. Always. He he's so like I'd like to see the, the, his his frame character in another movie, or watch another movie where Dennis Hopper is at the same intensity level. Yeah, that, that he stays at the whole fucking movie, and like because he he's he's all over the place emotionally. He's like like at one point he goes to his buddy's house and watches him like sing a lounge song. Uh, and he starts crying, and he's just like, you know what, fucking, just starts screaming and yelling and punching people. Dude, like, yeah, like going like, off on everyone there, yelling at the ladies in the room too. Yeah, he's he's just all over the place, just emotionally. But a lot of the a lot of that emotion is really just anger, just yeah. pure fucking anger. But watching it, it made me think, huh? I know this is set before Twin Peaks, which. It's close enough time frame wise that I'm sure Lynch had been thinking about Twin Peaks, maybe while making this. Yeah, I could totally see that. Imagine Frank's character is actually possessed by uh, Bob. Killer, yeah, he's he could be potentially possessed by Killer Bob or another Black Lodge entity. Because there's plenty of Garmin bows of that that Frank's making. All the suffering, or all the human suffering and anguish and fear. Yeah. That makes total sense because uh, you know I was going back rewatching. I was like, if you think about it, this is like a great blueprint for a lot of the Lynch stuff. Because I was thinking about like Twin Peaks season three, like all the performances they'd have in that one. Yeah, and I was like, because he likes he loves lounge singers. It seems like or some sort of he likes lounges and per- music performances. But I'm glad that he put like that whole the whole Blue Velvet song in here at one point. When she's at the, or at least I remember it being the whole. Yeah, the lounge singer sings Blue Velvet. I think she sings it like a couple times in the movie. And I guess that's uh, Dennis Hopper's character's like favorite movie, or favorite, you know, song. Yeah, and they, they, they actually play it over too, don't they, in the soundtrack sometimes? Yeah. If I remember correctly. Which I did go back and listen to uh, just the other day. I had a. I think I was at work by myself and I was like, I'm just going to play fucking uh, Angelo. Badalenti. Um, I'm butchering his name, I'm sure. The guy who does basically all of Lynch's music for his films and shows. Who also has just like partnered up with Lynch and made a couple CDs, which I listened to one of those and it was pretty good. Yeah, I wish uh I wish we could talk to David Lynch. <laughs> yeah. I, I I could almost see him being like, Yeah, I'll come on the podcast, of course. Remember when he was doing that weird weather shit a while back? Oh, he's still doing that. Oh, okay, is he still doing it? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, still, it yeah he's still doing the daily weather and the da- uh, daily number. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, please, uh, God, let him do a final f- season of Twin Peaks if uh, it, if he get, if he can before if not, if not he's a, getting older. Yeah, I mean. if not a final season, give us like a weird in between movie, kind of like Fire Walk with Me. I want to see what Bad Cooper's been doing. I want to see what Mr. C's been up to. Yeah. Uh, since the 80s. Or oh, I guess it's 89. Yeah, or whatever. Or 90. I, I don't... Well, they never said the year at the end on the last whatever. Yeah, that is true. Um, in fact, fuck it. Uh, give us a Twin Peaks trilogy send-off. Two and a half hour, three mo- two Or three two and a half hour movies. I would love to see that. One of those has to be a Mr. C... Uh, Oh yeah, go in between between two and three, but um, but yeah, like the the more I watch Frank, just I, I was just, the first my first viewing of it up until the baby wants to fuck scene, uh, I I just like God damn like because that's I think one of the first times you see Frank. It is the first time you see him. that's where it all starts really taking off. Yeah, where you see just right off the bat, Frank is unhinged and dangerous and loves driving fast. Oh, loves it, but like. The more you watch the movie, he just keeps staying at that same crazy level. Unless he's listening to, you know, lounge music and shit, which he just loves. That was the, his 
most polite part in the whole movie, just him sitting there when Jeffrey caught him from across the room. He's just sitting there just in awe watching this lady sing a song. He's rubbing a little piece of blue velvet while she does it. Yeah, from her robe or whatever. Yeah, from the robe. He uh, he sliced a bit of the blue velvet off so he could, you know, put it in her mouth and his mouth. And, uh, yeah, he beat that lady. It's It's been just long enough since I've seen some of, other, of Lynch's work, like Mulholland Drive. Him and uh, Dennis Hopper never did anything together again, did they? Not that I know of. Or yeah, I, I, like I said, I the reason I brought Mahal and Drive like at the end of this movie, my roommate he was like, I told him before we watched it because he agreed to watch it with me a couple days before, and I was like, hey, let's watch it on Monday night, bro, and he's like, all right, sounds good. I told him I guarantee whatever kind of day you have at work on Monday, this movie will make you forget about whatever the fuck was going on in your day on Monday, and he had a bad day, and it fucking did. He was like, yeah, you, you weren't kidding. Uh, that movie made me fucking forget all about. Uh, the shit at work or whatever. And I was like, yeah, dog. Like, and I told him, if you thought this was wild, check out Mahal and Drive. You'll feel fucking insane by the end of that movie. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a brain scratcher. Um, but yeah, like the more out there, as I was watching it, you know, finishing it, which I guess counts as my second viewing of it or not, not really second. Once I finished it, all I could think of is this motherfucker has a lodge spirit in him. Oh yeah, like because like there's there's one scene in particular where he has abducted Jeffrey and the lounge singer because he catches them together, and he's like, "You're gonna come party with us, me and my friends." Which is funny. Jack Nance is in this as one of his buddies. Yeah, uh, and oddly enough, you know who else is in this fucking movie as one of Frank's buddies? Uh, I point him out the other night to Byers. Was, the voice of Chucky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bra- uh, Brad Dorif is. I was, I was like, "Hey, Chucky!" I was shocked. in his silver suit. Yeah, I was like, holy, because I kept looking at that guy, and I'm thinking, he's just this little side character who's only got like a handful of lines in the movie other than <laughs> in the background. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was fucking Brad Dorif and, and Jack Nance, because at one point, Jack Nance shows up, and he just like punches the fuck out of, out of uh, Kyle McLaughlin's character, and it's just like, my name's Bill. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks at him and just like, just won't stop and it's just very weird but yeah. it was glad i was you know i haven't seen jack nance and a whole lot of things yeah frank had it was weird himself his fucking crew with him equally just as fucking weird wouldn't have mind knowing more about them either honestly yeah but like at one point like like i said he's abducted them and he's got them in the car with him and they're all piled in this big ass car and he's driving fast as fuck he's hitting the nitrous oxide they're drinking and shit having a good old time um then they were like, hey, we're going to go to uh, Ben's house. And they're like, yeah, let's go visit Ben. And I forget the actor who plays Ben. I've seen him in a million things. I yeah, tell yeah, he's you. Like, yeah, he's been in so many things. And he's just kind of like... <sighs> they get some drugs from him or yeah, something. Yeah, they get they? drugs from him, but he's like... He's also... He's kind of the plug. And, hey, if you need to like keep a... Keep kidnap victims somewhere like you can keep I got him here. You. Yeah, like he was just you know he's not a good guy, but he's he's very nice. He's very cordial. He's very polite in a sense. Even though I think he takes a couple swings at Jeffrey too. But uh, they stop there for beers so they can you know buy some drugs and hand some money off and shit and check on the hostage victim. Uh, Frank's like for, uh, Frank's ready to go. At this point, he's just like, all right, everybody, let's go. I'll fuck anything that, that moves. moves. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, and like, I, th- I was watching this online, and I, th- and I thought the video player just fucked up. And I was like, what? And like, I rewound it back, and then I realized, oh, it didn't fuck up. That- that's just how they're doing it. F- the-, the one weird thing in the movie, Frank is standing there, and he's like, all right, let's go. And then it just like, the immediate next frame is just, He's gone. Yeah. But nothing has really changed in the room. It's just, they just plucked him out. And I was like, oh, I was like, that's giving me fucking some, uh, some Black Lodge vibes pretty hard. hard. That's, and that's when I was like, dude, he's got a Black Lodge entity in him. I know. I, I wish I could have been there in when this movie released just to see what general audiences said about it. You know what I mean? Because this is before Twin Peaks, but after Dune and... 
Obviously, after a racer head and shit like that. And I'm sure a lot of people probably went to go see it. I'm sure some people might have been turned off by Dennis Hopper alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Because Baby Wants to Fuck is such a hard scene to watch. Yeah. You know, like, we're not doing it justice talking about it. It's just... It's so unsettling. It's not It's not like it's hard to watch like shit me and you've watched other years, like a Serbian film. That was fucking had hard to watch. Scenes. Yeah. This is just oh, I felt, an unsettling. I felt something inside of me shake when he said it. Yeah. And it, I even knew it was coming too. It's like I said, it's like right where the shift is in the movie because a lot of this is just like Scooby Doo, 18, 19 year old college freshman just kind of fucking around because he's back from school because of his dad, kind of checking out the mystery. Then it all just takes like a big turn. Because when he got caught, I was like, oh, now you're getting... Like, the first time I'm seeing it, I mean, like, the very first time I thought, oh, you're in her closet, you look like a peeping Tom. I was like, now you're fucking caught and arrested, bro. Yeah. And But then it gets all freaky, and I was like, now it's kind of like a porn. And then it gets... Enter Dennis Hopper, Frank. Then it just jumps up a notch. Yeah. For the rest... Of, like, I, I turned to... And it was like, hard to believe, or to my roommate, and I was like, hard to believe this all started over a severed human ear at this point. Like, by the time he's, like, deep into the investigation, he's like, yeah, he's like, I fucking forgot about that, too. I'm like, that's how Lynch will do it. Yeah, and it, it's it's a great movie. Um, like, I was satisfied. Like, it was one of those, like, it was always in the back of my head, like, hey, you need to finish watching this as much as you love like, everything else you've seen that Lynch has done. Like, you need to finish it. And I was finally like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Do you think it's fair to say now at this point, Whitehead, in, in the context of like right now? Because I, I forget about this one too. It's almost like his other work overshadows it a little bit. It, yeah, they yeah, because everyone talks about Mulholland Drive, which is a really good movie. It is that movie is just fucking wild? I like it took me two watches without reading anything about it, just two solid watches of it before I was like. Oh, okay. That's what's happening. Yeah. Which the first time, granted, I was not very sober. Not gonna lie. I feel um, you. But then, like, as much as I tell, I'm a fan of Lynch. There's still his other movies I haven't seen. Well, he, I he's made so much too, and some it's hard to fucking find. Yeah, because like apparently he's got he had like a I think they canceled it or it was just like a very limited run on HBO. Oh, and I'm pissed off. I can't think of the name of it. It's called, like, House Guess? Or Ho... Uh, maybe it's just called, like, Hotel? I think it is. He, I think he came up with the premise, and he got a few... I think he got, like, two other directors, and he directed one film. Or he directed one episode, and he got these two other filmmaker buddies of his to do the other two episodes. But I think he had like he wrote the stories. I'm pretty sure and just had them direct it. Oh man, I'm, yeah. mad, I'm mad. I can't think of it because like when I ran across it, I was like, "What the fuck is this? Like, why have I never heard that? Heard about this?" Well, like it's that when you brought up the lawnmower guy the other day, and I, I knew exactly what you were talking about. I've never seen it. My stepdad had oddly enough, and he told me about yeah, it. Yeah, I can't think of that. What that one's called either. So I want to say Lucky, but that, that's the that's the Harry Dean Stanton movie. That I don't know if Lynch directed with the lawnmower. No, no, no. The one with uh, oh, oh no. Um, I guess Henry D. Stanton's in that one too. Yeah, but no. He there's a newer. It's Stanton. like one of the last things he did before he died. Sorry, I'm trying. To, I'm just going to IMDb of David Lynch. I'm trying to find the title for the one. I think I want to say it's something in or something hotel, like you're saying. Was it like around 06, the one you're trying to think of, like early 2000s? Oh, no, the thing I'm thinking of, I think it was in the 90s. Let me, let me, sorry, let me pull up old David over here real quick on the IMDb. Let me go to all his director credits. Or I'm trying to go to his director credits. My IMDb's being slow as shit. Hide that. He's only got 98 directing credits, so... Only 98. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's doing shit right now, apparently. Uh, he, oh, the weather report? Yeah. 152 episodes. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to find that hotel one. 
He does so many shorts, too, which I've always enjoyed that he keeps doing shorts. And I've sat down and watched a bunch of those shorts because he's got, I think, the majority. He's got a lot of them on uh, his YouTube channel. Yeah, I do like that he actually does utilize YouTube, which is cool. I mean, you think more directors would, or and I'm sure some do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess he did a PlayStation 2 commercial in 2000 called PlayStation 2, the third Yeah, I, place. I, I sat down and watched that the other day. That's a very, that that's a real, like, if you didn't realize that David Lynch had made a commercial for a PlayStation 2, you would 100% know he, like, if he didn't do it, somebody is biting his uh, style real hard. Inland Empire? Is that the one you were trying to think no, of? No, I have yet to conquer Inland Empire. I've never watched that either. That's three one of the hours watch. long. I've read about it in depth. And it makes, like, just reading about it was like, holy shit. Like, this is all over the fucking place. Of course, I'm just going to mention, for the fuck's sake, watch Lost Highway. Anyone out there that's in it? Uh, I'm so sorry, but I just can't find this hotel one you're talking about. It might about. not be named Hotel. I'm going. It's going up by order of year. That's like, yeah, lean over and look real quick. Hotel room. Oh, sorry, hotel room. Two TV, 1993. Yeah. He did two episodes of it. I think there was only three episodes of it. Yeah, I'm saying he just directed two, though. Three-part mini series set during three different eras in a single room of an odd hotel where employees never age. Every story has a slight twist to it, but the stories are mostly dialogue-heavy psychological relationship dramas. Uh... Yeah, he's only got two episode credits, so I guess someone did the third one. Oddly enough, there was a show on HBO a couple years back that just focused on one hotel room and just the various guests that stayed through it. Like, someone more funny, like, whatever happened to these actors in it, I think. Uh, that's that's how, like, just what little I read about this, that's how this one is. Because some of the episodes are funny, some of them are, ser- like, one of them's serious. And I don't remember what the third one is. Yeah, I'm trying to see who's all in this real quick. I think Jack Nance is in it. Yeah. I, he, I, think, I think that's how I found it. I was reading up on him and was like, huh, what's this? Well, Harry Dean Stanton's in it as Mo. If you can, so uh, he loves using the same people because Jack Nance is a racer head. Yeah I, yeah, I found that out too, and I was shocked. I did not realize. He looks so different without a mustache. He, he really just, does. He's not, he's not even that much. I mean, you know, he's a little older, but he got a little thinner. He's just a little thinner in a racer head, but just no stash, and it's like. Yeah, because, like, his character in um, Blue Velvet looks just pretty. I mean, hell, it was just the. It's neg- like Jack Nance and everything using Jack Nance in, kind of. Yeah. I mean, it looked like. Um, I, oh, fuck, I can't think of what his name was in Twin Peaks. Um, Fuck! What is it? That's oh, okay, man. Uh, yeah, it don't. It matter. don't. It don't matter. It don't. It don't matter. All, all that. Oh my god! Uh, all that matters is Jack Nance looks like every one of your dad's friends from the early nineties. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Whitehead, we're about twenty eight minutes in. Do we want to? We talk any more about Blue Velvet? We want to wrap it up. We uh, do let's wrap it up because I feel like we're just, we've just went. We, we've just we've, been we've just been gushing. polishing Lynch's knob. Yeah, hard, hard as fuck. And this is no longer a Blue Velvet episode. So let's let's end it. Uh, how many uh, chili dogs? How many chili dogs you want to give this one? Uh, shit, I'm gonna have to give it uh, eight and a half chili dogs. Only because it is one of the Tamer Lynch ones. Because if you haven't seen fucking True or True Detective, Twin Peaks or anything like that, you wouldn't even think it might be by the same guy, honestly. Just from the context of your watching, this is like a viewer that's yeah. never watched any Lynch stuff. But this is a great movie, and on the cover art, you would think this is going to be more of a romance thing. I mean, and it kind of is. It is, yeah. At times, but this, this is just a really good... Uh, I don't know, crime thriller. Yeah, and an engaging one, too. Yeah, because like the whole time, you're just like, whoa, what the the fuck's about to happen next? Yeah. What's Frank about to do? Is Dennis Hopper going to top himself? How many chili dogs are you giving it? Uh, I'll give it... Eh, fuck it, you said eight? I said eight and a half. I'll give it eight and a half as well. I'm just because it's unimaginative. Uh, no, no, absolutely nothing wrong. Just because there's, if we ever talk about other Lynch stuff, there is other Lynch stuff that I like more than this. But I do like this a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll have to do make a Lynch scale between all of his movies when we cover them. And uh, do you know what? Should we tell everyone why we're doing the Chili Dogs? I've mentioned it before. No. Uh, no. 
Don't tell them about the chili dogs. No, in but the yeah. spirit of David Lynch. You guys figure out why we no. rated it chili dogs. Because chili dogs are awesome, but you figure out why we specifically said how many chili dogs are given this movie. Yeah. But, uh, but all right, we're out of here. We'll catch y'all later. Be good, everybody. Go, go watch Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet. Velvet.